hello and welcome to this live stream where I'm going to be painting a cute little robot and this is the or well one of the final parts of my painting and this is what I'm going to be doing this is my plan for it that I did in ZBrush and KeyShot so there's my plan of the little robot and it's it's at a bit of a funny angle just because I've got it turned 90 degrees just to make it easier for me to get in there and paint it so that's what it's going to look like in the end i don't think i'll get it done in this session because there's quite a lot to it and it is the main focal point of the painting so i'm obviously going to be putting a lot of care and attention into this right so i'll just move it so you can see what it looks like at the moment as if by magic we get the painting appears so i'm just going to put my reference to one side so that i can see it Okay, move those out of the way. So I'm going to be starting off just by blocking in, getting all the main colours done of it, and I'll leave the palm tree till another time, because that's another problem that I'm going to have to face. I'm not sure quite how I'm going to do that yet. So I'll get that blocked in, and while I do, I'm going to probably talk about something I think oh you all right Davy we well, got 20 minutes and then you're off you all right then Davy right so where to start I think I'm gonna start with some of the red So because this is a foreground object and it's the main focal point, I'm going to be making this very, very saturated, the colours. Yeah, I'm not too bad, Davy, at the minute. I'm quite happy. I'm just going to potter along doing this painting now and enjoy a nice bit of a Friday afternoon. Now, interestingly enough, Davey, I've just read from one of his comments, has been working on his dining room in terms of DIY, and I've been doing the same too, which is an absolutely huge story. So I've not been working just on my dining room, but also on my living room as well. And hall. Hello, Art by Raffaella. Glad you can make it. I'm just getting started blocking this in the start of the robot. Yeah, it's a it's a huge story the whole um decorating incident. I bought some paint from a very reputable company, probably one of the biggest names in paint. I put it on the wall and after a little while, the smell didn't go of paint. I thought this is a bit strange, and a few weeks later, the smell's still not gone. So I contacted the company, and they said, well, we'll give you some new paint that you can put on top of that, and that'll seal in the smell. So I got the new paint, put it on top, smell's still there. Just mix that paint up, try and do two things at once, which is never a good thing. Um, so, got in touch with them again and they said try putting on some of this um, it's like a primer that's really, really harsh and it supposedly gets rid of all smells. Well, funnily enough, it didn't get rid of this smell. So then we um, 
decided, well, the only way we can do it is to just completely sand it all off the walls. So we sanded the walls down, which took ages. We did, we'd done the same thing in the downstairs, downstairs toilet, we'd use the same paint. So we sanded all that off. And it was all going well, the smell had gone. So we wallpapered it. And the smell came back. So somehow the smell had gone into the actual plasterboard and was causing us some real problems. So in the end, we've had to have <laughs> all of the plasterboards ripped off and new plasterboards put on. And and then we've had to repaint everything and redo the flooring and just everything is needed doing again. And this is since last September this has been going on. So we haven't really been able to use our living room for a year. Because obviously it took a while to try and work out what was causing the problem. So yeah, it's been fun. And yeah, Davy, definitely dodgy paint. Definitely something wrong with it. Yeah. So not not good. There's there's been loads more incidents along the way. Tons tons of more fun and games with it. But that's that's a brief version of of things that have gone on. But it has been an absolute nightmare. But hopefully we're getting there. We're nearly done. Nearly done. Right. Yeah, I'm just getting some base colours in here. I'm not trying to do anything too fancy in terms of blending or anything yet or going too giddy. Just get some rough colours on so I know what we're dealing with. This again is going a bit darker. I suppose bad luck's all relative, Davy. I think. Because we've had this problem, but I'm guessing that there's some people who've had a lot of a worse time this year, so... It has been a bit of a nightmare, but you can't complain too much. There'll always be someone out there who's had worse luck. I'll just grab the thing to stop my hand touching it. Won't be a second. bit like we're doing art though you think all this DIY stuff you think oh, I'll get it done really quickly and these jobs take a lot more time than you'd think I mean one of the things we had to do was strip the And the staircase, all the railing down, and then re prime and undercoat and gloss that. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but it took hours absolutely hours to get that done. All these little things take ages. It's a bit like doing this painting. You kind of think, oh, I'll get that little robot done in an hour. And I'll tell you now, it won't be done in an hour. We'll do a little bit of blending around there. Just going to a little bit of this darker red here.
So because we haven't had our living room for so long, I've, I've put off watching some some films that I got about a year ago. And once I've got my surround sound system back up, I'll be able to watch them. I've got um, David Lynch's June to watch. Because the last time I saw that, I really enjoyed it. So I got it on Blu-ray and... I'm looking forward to watching that again. And I've also got, also by David Lynch, Mulholland Drive, which I think is a cracking film. And I'm looking forward to watching that. And also Gremlins. I got the original Gremlins. Because I wanted to watch that as a Christmas film. That should be good. Just got a bit in there, yeah. Yeah, I think Mulholland Drive is one of those films that I absolutely love it, but you, it's, I wouldn't really want to recommend it to anybody. You can't say, oh yeah, it's great, go and see Mulholland Drive. Because I suspect a lot of people aren't going to like it. Whereas if you do like it, I think you'll love it. Yeah, I've thought before, should I actually be talking about films on my channel or should I just keep it purely to art things? And I thought, well, it's... Films are a big part of our sort of visual language now, so... It'd be odd not talking about them, really. They must definitely influence my painting. Somebody noticed the other day that this had got a bit of alien to it my painting at the moment especially the gunk in it I thought oh it has yeah the original alien I think that was Gareth from Rabbit, Rabbit Black noticed that which I hadn't seen before so all these things go into your head without you realising and then pop out later in your art so I think it's well worth talking about films plus they're great aren't they Right. Oh, you don't think it, you don't think it's good repeat viewing quality, Mulholland Drive? Hmm. I th I know what you mean because there are some films that I really enjoy them. Like I just saw um, Mother by Darren Aronofsky, and I really enjoyed that. But I have got no wish to watch it again ever. And that's like a lot of his films, like Requiem for a Dream. Really enjoyed it, but not bothered about seeing it again whereas I think with Mulholland Drive I don't I can watch that again and again really I think the bit in the cinema the silencio bit's just brilliant I think it's there I think if you like the whole atmosphere of it then you'll enjoy watching it again because once you've seen the story and you know it you've You've kind of been there, done that, haven't you? So I can see what you mean. Definitely won't be everybody's cup of tea. I do like a bit of David Lynch, so. I know he doesn't like his version of June, but when I saw it recently, I really enjoyed it surprisingly good and the effects were still great on the worms it's looking good so far it 
Yeah, I, th I think you're right. It's, it's a while since I've since I've watched Mulholland Drive. It's a few years, but then when I watch it, I think I'll really enjoy it again. Yeah, I think I need a bit of a gap between watching it. Yeah, it's not a film that you could watch three times in a week. Definitely. Well, you could, but it'd be a bit of a struggle. I don't know if there's any films that I could watch three times in a week. I mean, my favourite film's Wicker Man, and I have to leave probably about a year or so between each watching of that. Yeah, is there a film that I could watch three times in a week? I'm not sure there is. As I'm painting this, I just keep changing the colours slightly. Keeping this quite dark underneath, because it's underneath the body of the robot. Again. Yeah, there is a new June being made, and I don't know. I've, we'll we'll see. I think after watching the other one and seeing the effects in that, I can't. I don't know. I like the old effects, but we'll see. It will be a film I'll watch. And yeah, The Wicker Man is a very strange film. Another one that I wouldn't recommend to anybody. But if you do like it, you will probably love it. So, I I really dislike musicals intensely. I'm not a musical person. Well, I'm a musical person, but I don't like musical films. Oh, I just can't stand them. They just drive me mad. Um, and yet, The Wicker Man is probably. A musical, I'd say. There are a lot of musical numbers in it. And it's also a bit of a comedy. There are definitely funny moments in it. It's a crime drama. So there's a mystery going on. There's a girl missing and you're not sure where she is. But if I had to label it in terms of genre, it is without doubt a horror film. It is one of the most horrific films I've ever seen. And every time I watch it, it's still as horrific. There are, no, are there any jump scares? I don't think there's any jump scares. No jump scares, but it is just so horrific, the ending. Yeah, it is a, a shocking end. <laughs> Sends a shiver down my spine every time I watch the ending of that film. It's one of those films that after it's finished, I have to watch a little bit of something else, a little bit of something light-hearted, just to come down from how awful it is. It's a bit darker in there, in the little Hoover attachment.
I'll be putting a highlight in there later and that will just define that part of it so that's all right okay right we need a darker bit of red behind the eyes and dark I think there are a couple of directors who I really like the look of their films who sort of influence me artistically. And that's Christoph Gans, who did Silent Hill, and he also did Brotherhood of the Wolf which is a quality, quality film. And he also did Crime Freeman, which has definitely got its moments. I think he's got a really good visual sense. And then the other one, oddly, is Lucio Fulci, who made all of the kind of zombie films in the sort of early 80s. Like zombie Flesh Eaters, House by the Cemetery, The Beyond, things like that. Just the atmosphere that he puts into his films, really, really like. Again, not films I'd recommend to anyone. But if you like very gory horror, Lucio Fulci is your man. that come in there there we go okay that's looking good I'm gonna leave some of the other little fiddly red bits till later I think I'm gonna get in some more colors now let's have a look let's get in this bit round here an odd colour this is despite it's I think on the actual model when I actually made it it was white but because of all the lighting on it it's gone a mixture of pink and green so let's go for just trying to mix the right colour that is too need more yellow Much of that. Okay, let's pop a bit of that in there. Don't think that's dark enough. Let's add a bit of this. Ultramarine. Looks better, I think. Yeah, that's it. got distracted by the chat um right a tv series called black summer i haven't heard about that are they are they fast zombies or slow for me it's got to be got to be slow but we'll see 
Although, saying that, I did watch Train to Busan the other night and really enjoyed that. And they were fast zombies. That that actually had a bit of a story to it. It was good. Really enjoyed that. All right, they are fast zombies and very, very nasty. Yeah, I'd still probably give it a watch. Yeah, they were fast in that train's abuse, and then that was still very enjoyable. I think the guy who directed it he did something else. King King of the Pigs, which was an animation. Me and my brother went to see it in Sheffield, and on the way back, as we were walking back to the car park, we got egged. And we chucked an egg at us. I don't know whether that got anything to do with the film that we'd seen. They like took offence at was watching King of the Pigs. I don't know, but luckily they missed. Favourite robot in a film? Oh, right, give me a minute. Favourite robot? I'm not sure with that one, favourite robot. I know one that I'd, I'd wished had been in, in it more was in the Stallone, Judge Dredd, when they had Hammerstein. I did really like the look of that and wanted to see more of it, but I don't think I don't think that's my final answer. I mean, could you call Briarius from Apple Cedar Robot? Or a cyborg, really. But I do like a bit of apple seed. Mm. I'm just going to look on my rack of DVDs. I do like um, the robots in oh, Lapita, the Studio Ghibli film. I do like those robots. I really like the design of those. They might be one of my favourites. And the sounds they make. What's yours then, Davy, or anybody else who's listening? Favourite robot. Just gonna raise the light on here a bit. I do like R2D2 as well. You can't really miss off that little fella. Right, let's go in with some white. Probably missed off some really glaringly obvious robot here. Uh, Metropolis, yeah, Maria. I still haven't seen that. And yeah, R2D2, yeah.
till I've concentrated because I've stopped talking. You don't really hear much about this film now, but I can remember seeing The Black Hole. It was a Disney film. And there were two robots in that, Maximilian and something else. And I actually had models of those. Like, um, I, they weren't Airfix, but like Airfix kits that I built up when I was little. They were a nice design. I don't know what they look like now. Probably terrible now. I mean, I think these little robots are all along the lines of, um, what we call it, Huey, Dewey, and whatever in Silent Running. I think. I think that's a bit of, bit of an influence, and also the ones in Farscape, the DRDs. And also probably. Um, that robot in Wally, -E, the the female one, you would say. Um, that bit there's. Right, yeah, thanks for joining, Davy. I'll see you later. I might still be on, we'll see. But yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah, I'm not going to apologise for rattling on about films all the time. Because I do think they're important for art. As are things like books and video games and... Well, even for me, I, like, I see a lot of art in board games, so, yeah. Um, what do I need to do? Let's do the eyes. Let's, let's treat ourselves. I was thinking about this this morning, that I'm coming to the end of this painting, and it's taken months and months to do. And I know some people like videos on YouTube where you can just go and watch somebody do a painting in one sitting and that's it, it's done. And I was thinking, you don't get any of that kind of instant gratification here on this channel. In fact, if I'd have been thinking about it at the start, I'd probably had the name of my channel has something to do with delayed gratif gratification. Because it takes so long from me starting one of these paintings to finishing it. I suppose that's why I've started that new series of one hour challenges so that I can get something done in an hour. Okay, I'll neaten that up later. That that's by no means done. Because there's some reflections to put in here and bits and bobs like that, and just need neatening up a bit. Yeah, I was thinking now that like we have when you order something. It's sometimes there the next day. And that's very different from when I was growing up where you always had the thing on anything that you ordered that you've got to allow like 28 days for delivery. There's none of that now. But I don't actually mind waiting. I, don't mind at all. 
I've just pre-ordered um, a new Hammer box set of films and that comes out in November. I'm quite happy waiting for that. Um, where to go next? What do I want to do? I think I might start doing some of the, well, I call it white, but there'll be virtually no white on it. Yeah, I'll start through this white round here, I think. On here. Let's do this bit. Okay. Yeah, I don't know whether you've heard about um, Kickstarter. I think it started probably about, I don't know, it's a crowdfunding site. Probably started about 10 years ago. And the first time I can remember hearing about it was the guy who did, he did point and click adventures, video games. And I think he did Grim Fandango. And I'm not sure whether it was full throttle that he did as a, as crowdfunding, I'm not sure, so don't quote me on that. But this was the first time I'd heard about sort of crowdfunding. And so he went on there and got people to pledge their money to it and then he made a game. But since then I know that some video game projects that have been crowdfunded have not actually come to fruition and I think there's not so much of it in video games now the crowdfunding but a place where it is thriving is in board games you'll see where this is going in terms of delayed gratification in a minute so I actually kickstarted a game the other day, just called Sleeping Gods, which is a cooperative game. It's got a bit of storytelling in there, and obviously, you like pledge an amount of money to get it made, and then in the end, they send you the game. And all together, the game had made more than a million euros by the end of the kickstarter campaign for it which i think is amazing just for a board game million euro straight away and that's before they do a version for the shops as well so the version in the shops will make more money for them thing is i've, I've effectively bought this game and it's almost like a pre-order really but the game won't arrive at my door until probably next May, June. So I've ordered it now, but it'll be ages before it comes. I've got another one called Atlantis Rising that I did on Kickstarter. And that was sometime last year and still haven't got it yet. It's coming out very soon now, I think in the next month. And it's just quite nice sometimes to have something that you've got to wait a long time for and got all that time to look forward to it. And you forget about it as well. And when it arrives, it will be all very well and good. Yeah, I sometimes think it's good to wait for things. This painting wouldn't be as good as it was if I'd just done it in a day. It'd just be very rough and nowhere near as detailed. So if you want something to be really detailed and impressive you've got to put the time into it and you've got to wait for it it's looking good yeah like I said this is all white on my original model that I made and yet on here it's green and some of the bits down here will actually be purple as well but 
but I'm going to carry on into here because this bit's a little bit more yellowy. So I'll add a bit of yellow into the mix. In fact, I might add a touch more. Yeah, some of the art in board games is just stunning now. A guy called Vincent Dutrait did the artwork for this game that I've got coming soon, Atlantis Rising. And that just looks gorgeous. He does some very good stuff. So if you want to see some quality board game art, look up Vincent Dutrait. D-U-T-R-A-I-T. Right, let's add a bit more blue to that. We need a bit more blue. Still very much in the green. So this almost goes back into a minty, minty green. It's better. Yeah, that's better. So yeah, all of this on the original model, I painted white. And then as soon as you light it, that goes right out of the window. And you get all these other gorgeous colours in there. I'll we'll just blend that in a little bit there. Now inside this bit is very blue. I don't think there's any other colours in there. Oh, whoops, that's too blue there. Well, I know that looks about right. There we go. Okay. Right, let's get that in there. This is all coming from these little tiny blue lights. And then we get some of this darker green coming in. And I'll just blend those two together. And then it actually gets a little bit of purple in it. These colours are all very, very subtle. That's it. I might add a touch more. Purpley red to that, just to bring that out a bit more. All these subtle colours that will just bring it to life. Yep. And then on the other side it goes from a lighter version of that through to a nice light blue. Bizarrely as well, the influence for this painting actually comes from theme parks. So you have your dark rides at theme parks. That was kind of the feel I was going for with this.
if you really want to see some quality delayed gratification then the thing to watch is um, Marble Machine X on YouTube. I don't know whether you've seen the original Marble Machine but it's this guy called Martin and I can't remember his second name but for now we will call him Martin Wintergarten because that's the name of his group and he made this a machine that used marbles to make the music and his original one was he made it himself out of plywood and it's a bit of a dodgy looking beast and he said it only really worked for while they were making the video so he wanted to make a posher version of it one that they could take on tour around the world and so he set off making the Marble Machine X. And I think it's now about two years since he started it. And it is a beast of a project, an absolute beast. Added to that, he's a bit of a perfectionist too and he worries about every single element of it and his videos are all all about the process that he's going through now what was he talking about this week I know recently he was talking about where you actually hit a vibraphone to get the right sound from it and the lower notes, you have to hit them not in the middle, but just a little bit lower down. But then the higher notes, you have to hit them pretty much in the middle. And so he had to rig up his machine so that it would actually do that. And it was a lot more complicated than that as well. I'm making it sound quite simple, really. But yeah, if you like delayed gratification and you like a bit of engineering, which I didn't think I would necessarily, but I have really enjoyed it. That's some quality videos to go and watch. Marble Machine X. Yeah, okay. Hi, Deves again. Are you all right? Good to see you again. I'm just blocking in the main colours for this robot. It's all a bit rough and ready at the minute. I will need it up later. amazing all these different colors that you see in here that were all all originally white Ugh, too much there we go that should be all right let's see yeah there will be some reflections on here later but again that's one of the final things I put in Now I've left a little space around those lights because that's where I'm going to put in the, the light blue. Just pop that in there. I can afford to go a bit bluer than that, I think. Let's do that.
Again, I've gone quiet because I'm concentrating. I'm already doing two things at once. I'm painting and I'm breathing. So for me, that's uh, that's impressive. If I've got to talk as well, everything could go pear-shaped. Oh, I had my cup of tea. Oh, it's cold. Oh. Oh. If ever you've seen the um, comedy programme Bottom from, I don't know, was it probably the 90s with Aid Edmondson and Rick Mayle? There's a quality scene in that where they drink cold tea, when they have a gorgeous cup of cold tea. When the gas man comes round and they pretend not to have any gas so they always drink their tea cold <laughs> and that's how i'm having mine at the minute and it's disgusting oh god see this is what you get from these videos you don't just get a bit of art you get to hear me in disgusting pain oh god that's all i can manage that that's disgusting oh cold tea right uh, where am I up to I've done that bit done that bit there's some more red down there thank you very much Deves yeah I try and make it as professional as I can get it I bought a new this little camera I bought that one so I could get two cameras in there go for a little brush on this I think So, there we go. Right, let's put this pink strip in there shall we got a bit of nice pinkiness goes across here bright pink so all these colors because this is in the foreground I'm making them strong and saturated and later on when I get in the blacks as well I'll make them as black as I can and I want to have blacks next to whites so that I've got that really strong contrast to draw the viewers eye in plus I'm going to be adding loads and loads of details so that also will draw the viewers eye in Good. Now I can take that pinky colour and add it to this blue from earlier and paint that into here because it's reflecting onto this white part here. Where does it go? It's along there. There we go. Just getting in the big shapes first of all, and then I can I can start tampering around with the little shapes later on. So now I think I'm going to get this black part in here. And that'll define it a bit more. So let's make a black. I was looking at the painting as a whole this morning and just deciding whether I want to go even blacker because at the moment I've made my black like this with ultramarine 
a lizarding crimson and a little bit of cadmium yellow light hue so that's how I've made my black and because I'm mixing it myself it I can only go so dark and I didn't know whether to introduce a bit of Prussian blue into the proceedings to make it even darker so that I could have all the gunk close up here and here be even more contrasty and then as we go to the bits in space behind just leave them as they are with the black that I've mixed out of my other colours so I don't know at the minute because I had thought I wanted to just use these colours and these colours only. So I don't know how, how much I actually want to stick to that or whether I want to go for it with another colour. I will see. Time will tell. I'm going to need loads more of this. Okay. Does make a very pleasing black, but I can obviously go darker if I introduce Prussian blue too, so I don't know, I'll see. It may be worth it. It might just give it that little bit more depth. I think probably what I've got to do is think about the painting itself rather than the whole series and make sure this is as good as it can be. But I'll, I'll have a think. This I'm just putting the black in at the minute. I'm not doing any kind of fanciness yet what have we got there just defining these areas there we go Been looking forward to painting this robot for ages. It's the reflections at the end that I'm looking forward to. So essentially I'm spending about 500 odd hours painting a painting just to be able to do an hour or so of faffing about painting reflections at the end. But hey ho. Gonna stretch me back a bit. Oh god, that's seized up. Oh. So you've heard me in disgust drinking that horrible tea and now you've heard me in pain from sore back. What I go through for you, what? Oh, can you imagine that? Rather than doing a sponsored run, doing a sponsored cold tea drinking. Ugh. There's not many worse things than that, is there really? Cold tea. It's made worse because you think you're coming up to it and you're getting a gorgeous cup of tea. Whoa, gorgeous, nice cup of tea all ready for me. And then you drink it, it's like cold. Ugh. Horrible. 
if I was a, a top judge, that'd be one of the first laws I passed, that tea can never go cold. And I'd spend billions and billions of pounds putting research into making tea that never goes cold. That'd be my first thing to do. Got to get your priorities right, haven't you? Sorry, banging the microphone. Looking good so far. I was thinking when I started this, oh, I'll get this done in about two hours. Yeah. It's not going to happen, is it? But I'd thought ahead and called this part one. Because I knew I wasn't going to get it done in one sitting. That goes around to there. Yeah, I know with um, YouTube videos, when when you watch these things on how to make better videos, they always say, like, don't don't do variety. Just stick to one thing. What's that thing? A bit of variety is good. So a bit of chatting about film and other things is is good. It broadens your outlook on the world. We're not careful i think if we just watch say art videos all the time that's all you know and you don't have that breadth of knowledge of anything else that you can actually draw on to improve your art get your inspiration from all different places I think it's too easy to just specialise now and just watch exactly what you want to watch and listen to exactly what you want to listen to and never deviate from that. I think it's good sometimes to push yourself and listen to something different. Right, let's start tackling this bit. Tons of reflections in here. And although it's going through to this bit in the background, the gunk, so it will be dark, there's also reflections of the robot in there as well. And because it's got glass, it's not as dark as the gunk. It is a tiny bit lighter. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to this. Like that. I'm just going to paint all this bit in black first. Have I got pronouncing your name, but hello, Saurab. Have I got that right? I'm guessing I probably haven't. Because I'm... I'm fairly terrible at languages. When I did French at school, I used to do it in a Yorkshire accent and drive, drove my teacher completely round the twist. Je voudrais... Own croque monsieurs. 
Yep, as you can see, absolutely terrible at languages. But thank you for joining me anyway. Thank you for the compliment. God, I'm just making that worse. This is supposed to be the quick blocking in bit. Oh well. Right, in there, there is a... In fact, let me show you it. Let me whiz this across. Get that right. Yeah. So in there you can see that there's like the reflection of the robot itself. So that's what I'm going to do now. Sort myself out. So it's quite a dark red. Put a base coat in first. Add a touch more of this in here. It all comes round in lines. Like that. I'm not going to do any more on that in a minute, at the minute. I don't want to get bogged down by details yet. Okay, where's next? I think let's go into this area underneath, I think, this white area. Okay, so it's pretty white, but not completely. We've got a bit of yellow reflecting off the sand. So I'm not worrying too much about getting this absolutely spot on yet. Oh, while I'm doing that, Let's do this bit on, on here. Give myself a little treat with a small brush. to get rid of that big brush and get onto the little one. I resist for so long and then the pull is too great. It calls my name. There we go. Good, like the look of that. So I was working on this before I got distracted. I'm easily distracted. I need to add a bit more of the blue, the ultramarine. Just make that touch darker under there. 
There we go. Yep. Okay. Now looking at where else I've got this colour. I've also got it back here. go go with adding a bit more of a black to it now that's more of a gray back there behind this part okay as we come around here we get a little bit of oh, of all sorts of colours we get a bit of red first. Looks they get quite strong down there into that sort of pinky colour that has a bit of the ultramarine in as well it's a bit more purpley than pink that's it yellowy grey again oh hello Davey you're back again so thank you very much taking a while but don't they always so let's touch more blue to that there's so many colors in this bit here that's well it's supposedly white You've got all sorts in there. A lot of art is about the looking. Because if you think, oh, I know what colour that is, it's white. As soon as you actually look at what you're painting, it's nowhere near white. There's no white in it. bit lighter for this I think so we've got this pinky colour coming in here there we 
go. Just stand back for a second and have a look at that. Talking to myself there. Okay. Right, next bit. Let's have a look. I think I could do with maybe doing this top part of this black tube. I've still got some of that in there. Um, right, okay. In fact, I might start. Yeah. Okay, I can mix some of that in to blend it with it, can't I? Okay. I just have to think for a minute there. So I'll get some of this alizarin, crimson. I think it's all these little surprising colours that make paintings. The things that you're not expecting to see there. Just as in a good story, it's the things that you're not expecting that are the best bits. I'll just blend that in with a bit of this darker colour. We go. Looks good. And then the same on the inside with the dark. I do need it all the way down near the dark. Yep. And along here. Are you going to give us any clues then about what you're doing for in Inktober, Davy? If you want to see some stunning work then have a look at Davy's Davy J out with a pen and have a look at his last Inktober. It was absolutely quality. Let me swap to a little brush there. One of the best things I've seen since I've been doing all this art lark on YouTube. Definitely one of the standout moments. Right, this is the blue that's coming from the eyes. And I will probably make it a little bit darker. Where's that going to there? Sorry, you're not you're not doing an Inktober thing this year, Davey. I thought I thought you were. I must have misread. Blend all this in. All right. Oh. So, first week doing drawings with a Star Wars theme. Second week, 
oh, sorry, I read that as Star Wars again. I thought like Star Wars, then Star Wars, then Star Wars. Right, Star Trek theme. Ooh, third week, Doctor Who. Fourth week. Um, let's try and guess before he types it. What would we go for? Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who. See, I'd go for Farscape every day of the week, but that's me. I love Farscape. I doubt it's going to be Farscape. Add a touch more of that in. I like the look of that. And they're not sure about the last two weeks. Okay then, so what else have you got? You've, you've got the big three, haven't you, really? Star Wars, Star Trek and Doctor Who. Oh, they're the big hitters. Yeah. Anime Wii could be good. Oh, yeah, Superhero Wii could be good. I mean, if you're going along the kind of line of huge franchises, I suppose Harry Potter. Could do some good Harry Potter creatures. Right, what am I doing? I think let's tackle. Um, let's get these white bits done on here while I'm here. These have to be. Pretty much white. Okay. Yeah, oddly, you don't see a lot of Harry Potter drawings out there. So that might be quite a good one to do. You do see a lot of Game of Thrones. I wonder whether maybe Game of Thrones has been done a bit too much now. And I've still yet to watch it. I did kind of think I'll wait while it's all finished and then I can see what the ending's like. And I don't think the ending's been that great, so I don't know if I'll even start now. Again, this is rough at the minute. I will have to neaten this up later by going back in with the black in the background. Gosh, look at that. I've made a right mess of it. These are hard bits getting really straight lines. Hello, Dina. Glad you could join us. Have you not got something starting soon? Have you not got a premiere for a new challenge starting? I thought you'd got that starting at four o'clock. Right, let's put this pink light in here. I'll probably go quiet for a minute here while I concentrate on this. Mm. 
Yeah, doing a straight line's hard work. Obviously not hard work as in digging trenches or things like that, or... And we stopped again. There we go. Yeah. Well, I think, seeing as though your premiere starts in five minutes, Dina, I don't know whether to just finish up, but maybe tidy up this little bit. And then can swap over and come and watch your video. So I've done this for oh, nearly an hour and a half. That'll do me. Hour and a half's painting on this. I need to have a proper warm cup of tea. I don't think either of you were here later for the cup of tea incident that I had. When I had a, I thought it was going to be a gorgeous cup of tea and it was cold. And I had a bit of a strop about it that I'm still going on about now. Cold tea. It's just unnatural. Normally I'd go and whack it in the Michael waves, but with doing this I couldn't leave it. Right, that's the the rough blocking in almost done. Starting to take shape a bit. I think before I do the next video I'll make a decision on whether I'm going to make this a darker black which I think I may do because I want to get that greater contrast and at the moment it's not that contrasty so this is what I'm heading towards at the end let's get that so we can see it yeah that's what I'm heading towards at the end so yeah I think these need to be very very dark I'm not going to go for black paint, but I might introduce a bit of um, another colour <laughs> that I can't think of at the minute. Prussian blue, that'll make it a bit darker. So there we go, that's where I've got to today, so that's an hour and a half work for that, blow my neck. Yeah, I was saying last week as well, I had a guy came round to do as an ensuite and what he could get done in hour and a half was unbelievable what i get done in hour and a half is just a bit of fiddling about but anyway so that's the start of it so i will do part two of this on tuesday at some point i might even do part two and part three all on tuesday so i'll just continue working on this i'm going to do it all in real time because this is the focal point and we'll well, we'll record it for posterity, I think. Do you know it's one of the final bits? Okay, so thank you for joining me. Yeah. Yeah, Prussian blue, I think I'll add. Yeah, because my, my black that I've used here is a mixture of ultramarine, alizarin crimson, and cadmium yellow light hue. So it does make a nice black, but I just think I need to go a bit blacker. Just to be able to get that contrast with the background, I think. It'll give it a lot more depth. And I can add that in at a later stage. Yeah, I think that's a good move. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining me. So if you're watching this live and you pop along now, you'll be able to see Dina's new video, the premiere of that. So I'll finish off here. Thank you very much for joining me. And hopefully I'll see you on Tuesday. And if you're watching it after the fact, you never know. The next video might already be up as well and you can go straight into that. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Cheerio.